Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the Female Role Models Podcast. Today's guest is a medical professional specialized in cardiology. She's based in Seattle, Washington, US, and is one of the warmest people I interacted with. She believes in excellent and compassionate care delivered through a partnership with each patient. This partnership is based on trust and open communication and directed toward developing individual goals and treatment plans. She strives to provide state-of-the-art care to her patients for the prevention and treatment of cardiovascular disease in order to restore their health and quality of life. Today, we will talk about healing the heart with Dr. Madalina Petrescu. Hello, Madalina, and welcome. Thank you for joining us so early in the morning. Wonderful. It's so great to be here, Alexandra, and I'm really excited for this wonderful time together. How are you today? It's very early in Seattle right now, isn't it? It's, it's uh, well, it's 8 a.m., and it's actually, for me, not early at all, <laughs> because the life of a cardiologist, you start your day around 6.30 or 7, and as I was mentioning to you earlier, I usually wake up at least two hours before that to have some time for myself. So for me, this is perfect. Yeah, I found out very fascinating. I find that very fascinating. So that's really, that's really nice. And then now you're freshen up. So you are ready to, to have this conversation with me about your career path. I'm re really looking forward to it. So thank you so much for being here. I wanted to uh, give you the opportunity to introduce yourself. Can you give us uh, some, um, some intro to who Madalina is? Yes, happy to. Um, so, um, as long as I can remember, I've always been interested in the healing arts and particularly the space of the heart. And this is what led me to become a cardiologist about 15 years ago. So I've been practicing in the Western philosophy of the healing of the heart as a cardiologist. Um, and along the way, uh, you know, with my passion and excitement, I also, uh, specified in specific leadership positions. I became the director of the advanced imaging of the heart. And I also did a lot of education. Uh, I was part of the educational national giving talks and national talks. And then um, also I became the chair of the board, which is what I do right now uh, for my practice. Mm. Now, along the way, my interest and passion also expanded and evolved in the healing of the heart. Um, so I actually, it expanded into kind of a deeper and more comprehensive type of healing of the heart because the external and physical healing, you know, I found out it was, it's wonderful, but it's not complete. It's really just the kind of tip of the iceberg. And so there's a deep ocean underneath there that really is so important related to the healing of the heart and related to really discovering ourselves and the unconscious barriers holding us back from that connection. So I really uh, took us down this path and uh, along the way, uh, we are actually also in the process of developing a program called Heart Consciousness, HeartQ, which is really about the whole uh, holistic type of healing of the heart by facing the unconscious barriers that stand in the way. So yeah, this is, uh, this is where I'm at right now. Wow. I actually saw the, um, what you mentioned, the holistic approach to healing the heart in one of the videos, the intro videos from the Swedish Medical Care Center in Seattle. Uh, they had a very nice presentation about you and that, that's really great. And then you've mentioned in the video that you um, approach uh, cardiology also from a holistic view. And I would like to explain what does that mean? Absolutely. So usually when people come to the hospital with a heart problem, a cardiovascular problem, if it's like diabetes or hypertension or blockage in the vessel of the heart or arrhythmia, they'll come, they'll receive a, a medical therapy or a procedure, then they go home. So what I found is that that's great. I mean, actually, cardiologists really do save life. You know, they, they, they are able to, to take a person who is about to die and save them and give them another chance at life. It's amazing. But I also found that that's not enough, that there's so much more to healing. So why did that happen to the person? What else is going on emotionally, spiritually, mentally? What else is going on underneath? Where is the stress coming from? Where is the source coming from? So like what I do with each patient is I try to like plant seeds about, let's have you take a look at your life because usually any type of any physical dis-ease or unease is usually a signal from the body. It's usually a signal sounding the alarm saying, the body saying, look at me, look inside. I need you to put attention because all, most of the time people are just running around doing this, doing that, you know, rushing everywhere, trying to just on the run. 
and they're not taking that space to look within themselves, to take the time, to take the space. So I always, in, in my, the way that I approach patients, I always kind of bring that out because so much of the disease is related to stress and lifestyle, so much of it. And so I really bring a lot of attention and I really um, inspire and recommend to people all kinds of books and practices like meditation, you know, going in nature, journaling, processing your emotions, taking time for self, taking time for reflection, going within yourself, slowing down and pausing. Don't run so quickly in life, you know? And really, because in, in, in healing, it's really, there's a lot that a person can do. The inner healer just needs to be activated. Otherwise, we're just putting a whole bunch of Band-Aids. So I really, um, you know, uh, try to do this with every patient. Admittedly, it's challenging because a lot of times you have small amount of time. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm known for kind of running late because I'm, I, I just always want to see what can I really do with this patient to go deeper, to not just say, here's a pill, but what else is going on besides that? Let's just not just take the pill and numb things up. Let's see what's really going on. And, and so it kind of depends because every per patient is different and it takes like my intuition and based on how I have that interaction and the way that I approach it. But I've had people that, um, you know, if they don't do this other holistic aspect, if they just do the physical only, I've had them go and come back again for the same problem. And nothing mm. really, you know, you just fix the physical, but they have the same problems and the same issues and nothing really changes. And then I've had some that actually take the advice and they do those things and they read those books and do those practices and start eating plant-based diet and all of these things. And then when they come back, they're off the medications they like uh, medical problems disappear and they're happy. The palpitations have resolved and they've able to transform their life and actually reach the true healing, not just the physical, you know, um, uh, fixing uh, that mm. a lot of times is there. Mm. And when it comes to um, healing and taking care of yourself, we will always have um, groups of people that say that they just cannot get out of their crazy schedule, for example. Uh, we hear about more and more um, younger uh, peers that have issues, not necessarily um, related to the heart, but generally they are burned out or they have issues with uh, focus or uh, just being at their best when they're at work or even when they're home. What can you recommend to people that um, don't really know how to get out of this circle of, I need to be busy because that's how my life should be. Yes. Well, this is actually, to be honest, I can speak to that because that's exactly where I was. I was that person. I was the person where I would get up, run schedules, perfection, like, you know, uh, so much pressure doing everything perfect. I was, I was like a robot. I did things on the schedule. And what happens is when you live that way, you're going to hit walls. You're going to get stressed. You're going to get burdened. You're going to get aches and pains. Your body is going to eventually not catch up because you're in the stress state. And if you're in the running in the stress state, you're, those people are going to run themselves dry. They're going to be depleted. And then they're going to lose the meaning and the purpose of this beautiful life that we have that we're meant to live with joy and vitality. So they just become so disconnected from the heart. And that's exactly what happened to me. And, and if nothing is changed and nothing is interrupted, then it happens for you. So what happened to me is I was totally like that. Like I, I had the job, the leadership, everything. The kids came, the husband came, then like all the stuff that I was doing, trying to be for running, scheduling, no time for self, no time for anything. And then my body gave way. I developed these horrible back pains. I couldn't move. I fell into a depression because running was my numbing agent. So I wouldn't face the emotions and it forced me to stop. It forced me to stop and to pause and to look within and to take the journey and to see where is all this coming from. So the, the thing is that if you don't do it, it will be done for you. Things will happen. All kind of anxiety or depression or body aches or dis-ease, things will happen. So um, the point is that we say to, that I, I, I say to people and you know, even to myself and even this hard thing that we're doing is what is the point of life? Why are we here? What is your purpose? What is really the point of this one life that we have? Is the purpose to run and to be stressed and to do, or is the purpose to live life as an expression of joy and love and vitality, to do what you love, to wake up in the morning and to say, wow, I love my life. 
what I think a lot of people are running and not really thinking, wow, what is the purpose of my life? And so, you know, the, the really, and, and even if they're in that, because that need is based a lot of times on there's something inside that is like a, a depletion, a hole, a void, and they're trying to fill it from the outside and the inside. So let me do more. Let me do more so that I can feel worthy. Let me do more and more so I can mm. feel important. Let me, let me, and, and that it's never enough. So really the only true healing process for this is to, it's from inside out. It's the healing comes, it's to go within and to feel enough, to feel the, the power of your own love, the power of your own heart. And that can't happen in the rushing. That needs to happen. You take time for that. That's why I get up in the morning. I, I, I wake up, I take time for self. I remember why I'm here. I remember my purpose. I remember who I really am beneath all these patterns that we all show up with of not enough this and labels and all of these things and identifications. And, and that's, and then by doing that, by coming into your true self, by having meditating, journaling, reflecting, um, you know, going into nature by doing these kinds of processes. Now you're actually living life being, I mean, that why are we called human beings, right? being we're not called human doings right we're called human beings there's a meaning to that we're here to be and the only really time that we can actually truly enjoy and truly be in the moment and in the present moment is to be and when we're rushing and running everywhere it's the opposite of being and life is in the present moment and when we're running over there or thinking about the present we're actually not being we're living either in the past or thinking about the future. So we're not really accessing the abundance of that present moment where all the life is. And the thing that I would say to them is once you do it, you realize, oh my God, all this time this is here for me. This is where the joy is. This is where the love is. It's right here in this moment. And once that experience happens, you can't pretend it didn't happen. And then, and then you just, you, 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 you put it in for me. I say every morning, it's not negotiable. I do it. And then I can show up to people now from an empty depleted. Let me do this. Let me do that. Lost, confused state, but I can actually show up to the world and to myself and to everyone from a full overflowing state of love and my true self, not from a needy place, not from a depleted state, because, you know, we can only serve others based on the depth that we have for ourselves. So if we're not taking that time to fill ourselves up, you know? If we're not doing that, then we're just serving from a depleted state. So every interaction is like, we are serving and meeting and greeting and seeing people at the level that we're at, which is depleted and stressed. So how do we wanna show up to ourselves and to others? It depends on where we are ourselves. And so for me, that's where really is the most important aspect of life is, mm -hmm. you know, showing up to people at the depth that we're, where we're at. And so I, for me, like this is non-negotiable. It's like oxygen. Why am I here mm -hmm. in this life? Why would I? Why would I not do this? This is it. And, but it, yeah. does, it does take a program and it does take a practice. And so that's the things that, um, and my recommendation is that you start each morning because you wake up in the morning, I got to do that, all these lists, all these lists. And then what happens is the patterns take you over. Now you're away from the present moment. Now you're starting your day with stress and running. You're showing up in that same. And then at night you're burnt out because your adrenals are burnt out. That's what mm. happens in the stress state. But isn't it better if we wake up and we say, I hear you mind. I hear you. I know there's a lot of things to do, but I'm just going to pause right now because I'm going to honor my true self. I'm going to honor life. I'm going to honor the present moment. And then you take that time and you meditate and you go into nature and you journal and you listen to music and you get into that present moment. And then from that place, you fill yourself up. And then now you can show to the world from a build up abundant overflowing state. Mm. I was thinking um, the first time we, we talked, I was thinking, what a positive person. <laughs> you share so much positivity when you, when you speak. And then I was also thinking at the same time after we, we started conversing, how cool is it to work with somebody like you every day? To go in a, in a place where you have, a, you know, somebody who's, um, I don't know if I will call it fulfilled, but happy about the state that they're at. And I feel that in, for example, in companies or in organizations, that state is overseen is, are you not focused on the work? Why are you so happy? <laughs> I, I'm really, um, I must share that I, I've been told that. I've been told, uh, not personally, but I, I know of people have been told, like, why, why is it that you're so happy? Did something fun happen? And how can somebody think that? I was really, um, at some point, really focusing on that and, you know, trying to understand 
how others see professional life. And I, I really love the fact that we started directly by sharing how you got to this amazing state of fulfillment with who you are and what you do. But I know that there's a story behind it and that, as you said in the beginning, it was an evolution. So I would like to go back to the moment where you decided to go towards cardiology and what does it entail to you know, take this decision? What were your drivers for deciding that? Um, beautiful question. And I really feel that a lot has to do with my childhood. Um, I was born in Romania and my parents, my dad was a surgeon. My, he, was, he was a physician himself. And, you know, uh, I didn't see him much because he was really busy. He was a surgeon. But every time he would come home, you know, he would bring this like, passion and he would bring this fulfillment of like he was able to serve you know he worked in a team he overcame challenges and he made a difference in the world and he was a healer i would peek in through the window when he did surgeries and i saw him working with a team and i was just so inspired you know so for me medicine is something that i kind of grew into because i watched my dad i saw how excited he was and he inspired me so it, it was one of those things that I just kind of grew into it. It was, it was like, okay, I see how I excited, I felt this excitement. So there's a lot of that that happened. Um, I was also pulled, you know, my dad always would talk about, you know, making a difference, making an impact, but also he would make it talk about, you know, living life as the highest version of yourself. Don't just walk in life passively like blah, you know, why would we do that? Really live life, you know, and I saw him doing that. Like he was, you know, he speaks like seven languages, you know, he's writing dictionaries, literature, essays, and he did medicine. I saw him with my own eyes, you know, so I experienced him and, and my mom also had this amazing energy. Like she just worked so hard. She always like, after we came from Romania, uh, we escaped and I was apart from two years. We lost everything we had. We were so, so poor. I barely saw my parents. We were cleaning toilets and rich houses and as she looked up and she said one day I will we will get such a beautiful house overlooking the lake and I thought she was crazy I'm like how is that even possible we're cleaning toilets we have no money I don't even have like a dime to buy candy you wouldn't even buy me candy but you're gonna so like she just had this and then it happened not just that but she manifested six houses and you know but so it was like this energy this love to so that was instilled to put a seed in me you know so then as i went on in my life and i just lived my life those were seeds inside me like taking growth you know like a plant like a tree so then when i came into college and i went into i just filled myself to healing and i said well what can i do to heal medicine medicine is needed people need to be healed and so that's kind of how I, I i decided to to go into that path um and then i went to medical school for four years um and then along the way um you know then i said okay i'm gonna go i went to internal medicine which is three years and when i did my internal medicine i moved to boston so across the country i went to uh, do my practice in boston and i remember being scared i remember all the stories i've heard oh my god you're on your own you're gonna have no time for yourself it's so stressful it's so busy you're in charge of life and death you're not it's gonna be so hard and i remember like not knowing anybody and there were two things that happened i didn't it was like unconsciously but i was reflecting two things happened one i said okay it's gonna be hard but you know um like my dad instilled in me, like the love for challenges. It's going to be hard, but I said, okay, I don't know anybody, but I will know everybody. I'm going to make everyone my family. Like every single person became my family from the janitor to the nurse, to the patient, to the neighbor. I was friends with everybody. I just made everyone my family. We connected. And in medicine, the way that we best take care of patients, it's not like me by myself. It's really as a team. So like mm -hmm. it really... It really set me up to work so well in medicine because I just connect with people and I work in a team and I love that connection. And that's how we provide the best care of patients. And the other thing that happened is I said, okay, life will be hard. And I know that it's going to be difficult. Um, but I said, well, I'm here. So if I'm going to do it anyway, why not give my 150% and why not do it and have fun? Like, why would I suffer? Like, I want to enjoy my life. So whatever I showed up to, no matter how difficult, no matter what, no matter anything, I just had fun. I just showed up like in this way of I'm going to make the most of this moment. So anyway, and then from there on the way, um, I had to make a decision. What in medicine do I do? And to be honest, uh, cardiology pulled me. I didn't say, oh, I'm going to do pluses and negatives and mentally this, mentally that. It was more like it's pulling me. Like it's like pulling me. Like my heart is like opening. It's cardiology. And I was naturally good in it. 
Um, I thrived in it. I was pulled to like the healing of the heart. So it just kind of, it was, I was pulled to it. It was a decision made by, for me, <laughs> to be honest. You know, I just listened and I said, okay, now it was really, really hard to get in because I didn't really accept women because it's considered a man's field. You know, it's so difficult and hard. You aren't called so much. You're de dealing with the hardest, most, you know, and the greatest instability in the way of man med uh, managing medicine. So they didn't really, um, you know, getting in as a woman was known to be very challenging. I find that so, very interesting because I remember you told me that when we discussed previously. Um, I'm not aware of, of this field at all. And when, when you say that they don't really allow women, what's the, what's the myth around that? What do you know and what, what did you find out when you tried and, and succeeded to enter this field? So when I realized that cardiology was for me, I kind of said, I really, really um, want to do this. Like, I'm going to do it. Then I said, whoa, everybody's telling me it's so hard. I know, like, because the reason is that it's known to not um, want to accept women. It's not something that's written somewhere, but it's, everybody talks about it and they don't really accept women in general. And the reason is because it's such a difficult career. It's such a hard career. You, there is a lot of sacrifice of personal time. Indeed, you know, um, you're dealing, there's a lot of call. When somebody's on call for non-cardiology issues, you can take the call and say, oh, okay, I see the problem. Okay, I'll see the patient in the morning. No worries. If it's cardiology, it's usually patients coding, life and death. Like the heart is the organ. When the heart stops, life stops. So every single aspect in organ system problem ends with the heart. So the heart is affected. It's always dealing with life and death. You need to think under pressure. You need to be able to function under the greatest possible stress, which is really burdensome. And so a lot of women that have been in that practice, um, you know, got emotional, things like that, or got pregnant or married, and they were not able to function to this really, really, really high standard. And so that's the reason that, you know, so like, for instance, mm -hmm. the place that I ended up going to, they hadn't taken a woman in seven years. And because they had these kinds of experiences, you know, mm -hmm. um, and I understand. I think what is really, uh, for me, what I find challenging to understand is, obviously, there will always be um, compromises to be made. Um, and it's obviously natural that at some point a woman might want um, to have a kid. So why would that be a problem? That's something that I really don't understand in some situations. I'm like, but you know that. It's not, it's not like one day somebody told you, oh, she's pregnant. Oh, really? She wanted a kid. Like, why wouldn't she? What, why is there some sort of questioning around what a person can do. And then obviously that, as, as you've mentioned, that can definitely be the deciding factor of whether a woman or a man will be picked for a certain job or for a certain profession. And how do you think we can fight this uh, bias towards, I don't know, I don't even know what this is. It's just a gender bias, I guess. It, it is a gender bias. And, and to be honest, it is challenging. And the reason in many fields, particularly, it's probably the same reason all the way across in all the fields is because they want that they want all pers people who are in that job to give all of themselves, you know, like they, you really like it. And actually I did do that. You know, you, you have to show up so much that there's very little time left to take care of a child, you know, to, to take care of other. So, you know, like in the traditional man versus woman, the man works all day long. The woman is at home cooking and cleaning. So there is still some of that there. Like mm -hmm. women, you know, do have more things to handle, you know, besides your mom. And, you know, when you have children, there is something about a mom that you need to be there as a mom. And I didn't actually get that when I made that decision. I didn't put the decision in the whole perspective of my life. Nobody said, hey, how does your decision fit in with a whole life perspective, you know? Mm. So mm. I, I didn't have children. I wasn't married. It was, it was perfect for me at that time. But if I would have had, I'll tell you this, if I would have had a child, um, I don't know if I would have been able to complete that program because it is so, so time consuming and burdensome. And there's so much learning that people need, like I would show up literally at five in the morning and I would leave like at 9 p.m. So that's how can you with those hours, you know, be able to go and be there for a child meaningfully. It's, mm. it's not mm. conducive. So they found that, um, it, you know, it is a field that takes a lot. It takes all of yourself and, and it is challenging. And, and I, and I'm not sure right now, I feel like change is needed. 
to be honest, because I feel like people need to bring balance into healthcare because if we're going to be physicians and taking care of patients, we need to be in integrity with health, which means if I'm telling a person, a patient, you should be healthy, you should make sure you take care of yourself, don't stress out, eat healthy and exercise, well, that means I should be doing that. How can I tell somebody exactly, all exactly. these things and then I'm not doing it, but I'll be honest with you. And the truth is that a lot of the physicians don't even have time to sleep. They don't even have time to sleep, let alone go exercise, let alone eat healthy, let, us, let alone meditate, let alone be there for their family. So because it's, there's so much burden and there's so much stress in the medical field, it, it, it really gets in the way. And so for me, I had to make a way to do those things because mm, nobody else yeah. really does this stuff. But I think that we need to do that. We need to bring the importance of balance. We need to honor that. It's not just about career showing up, period. It's about balance, bringing the balance. Because you know, like studies have shown when you have certain countries where they actually have more balance and, and they actually give them you know, less work and more balance, people are happier, they have higher productivity, they do better, they want to be at work. Whereas, you know, so th that change is needed everywhere, all across the board, to be honest. Yeah, and I, I love that you've mentioned that because right now I live in a country that's very focused on balance and what some might say work-life balance, obviously depending on the industry that you're in, it might look different. But what I can tell you is that people here, most of them go home at 4.30 and most of them who have kids, they go and pick up their kids themselves. So there's no, there's not this uh, feeling of, um, oh, I need to finish this. Yeah, I need to finish this, but I also need to pick up my kids. So I'm going to go pick up my kid and then I'm going to finish this email. And it's so natural. And I remember how stunned I was when I realized that people do leave at 4, 4.30. And if you compare it to, for example, some countries in Eastern Europe, you don't really leave. You just stay until you say you finished everything. And that can be 7, 8 p.m. Um, and it's obviously, um, I think it's counterproductive to the idea of respecting also your free time. Because how are you supposed, as you said, how are you supposed to be uh, focusing on your inner balance if you don't really have time for it like if you also need to go home and prepare food if you uh, if you need to exercise if you need to have seven hours of sleep on average when do you do all of those things right mm -hmm. and i i also like the fact that you've mentioned uh, you've mentioned something about um how you got to let's say a certain state of balance and i would like to mm -hmm. i would like you to tell us more about well Obviously, it took some time. I imagine it wasn't something that you just discover one day. So what was, first of all, what was the process? And second of all, what is, uh, what is this setup of balance that you've created with, uh, with your life right now? You know, it's perfect. And I, and I realize that in life, everything always, but I just want to get back a little bit. I think it's the culture change, you know, like the culture in it, it, there's a changing culture that needs to happen across the world. There's a country culture in general. And then there's, there's also the profession culture. There's two types of cultures, right? And so I think like in America, the culture here is to work hard. And if you don't work hard, you're lazy. You know, like that's, that's how it's perceived. And particularly in cardiology, it's definitely, honestly, I'll be with you. That's how it's seen. Like the people that actually, oh, I want to go home to pick up my, I want to go home early and have time for me. That person is seen as, oh, he's not a team player and he's being lazy and he doesn't want to work. And that's, that's the perception. And that reason it's seen that way is because when you're in the stress state, that's how you perceive things. You per perceive things in the worst case scenario. If somebody was perceiving that in a balanced, you know, life is always based on our perception. So the people that are perceiving it that way is telling you who they are, right? And how, like what stresses that they're coming from. Whereas if you're from like this kind of higher, more comprehensive, kind of wiser, kind of connected a balanced health like that's what true health actually is um you know then you would say well it's so good you know we are promoting health health means balance health is not just physical health is emotional mental spiritual physical so i really feel like it needs to change in the healthcare. It absolutely is needed. And I realized I had to go through my life the way I did because I had to get on the other end. I, I was on the other end in the sense that I was one of the most stressed out, burdensome. Like you, if you would have seen me, I mean, it was just because I was doing so much. I was, I was so busy. The job in itself is just incredibly busy. Then I had my plate with all the, with all the, with all the, 
talks I was preparing for in, the, in my weekend. And then I was doing leadership and then the kids came and I didn't really know about balance. So I didn't show up to them as I, as I would have now as a mom, my husband also. I mean, I was so incredibly stressed. I had no sense of balance. I was unilaterally, I was fitting into work's idea of what is right. So their idea of succeeding in my job is to give 100% to your job. So me trying to be the good citizen, I said yes to that. And therefore, I actually said no to me, to my family, to my kids, to my free time, to my inner growth. I didn't get that then, right? But it needed to happen because I needed to experience that end of it, the entirety of it, to really understand why it's not healthy. I needed to experience that. So then in that experience is when I got all this really horrible back pain. I was actually always sick. I was having pneumonias. I mean, I, people knew me like, oh my God, you're always sick. I have toothaches, all kinds of hip pain, plantar fasciitis, back pain. I couldn't walk. So like it, it, that's what happens. You know, when you're in the stress state, things happen. The body starts giving signs that something is needed. You're on the wrong direction. You need to stop, reflect, and take a sharp turn back, you know, to the alignment of your heart. So then for me, what ended up happening and the way that I got to the balance is my body did it for me. And when I was trying to look for all these physical fixes for my pain, the pain that I had, I was looking everywhere. I spent an hour, I was so, an hour, a year, so depressed. I mean, I was just so unhappy, so unfulfilled. And then I realized there's nothing. There's nothing that they found. So I almost had no choice, like, but to go inside. So I picked up a Louise Hay book. And I don't know if you know, familiar with her. She says, you can heal your life. And Wayne Dyer, somehow it came in my hands. And then it talked about, you can heal yourself. And I said, wow, there's healing that needs to be done here because that way of living is actually the opposite of health. It's on the other side of health. It's way on the other side. So we need to come back to the alignment, living from the truth of our hearts, the wholeness and love of our hearts. So when I went into that journey, I started realizing, wow, I've been living life from so many unlimiting, limiting beliefs that I didn't even know I had that were pushing me, driving me to behave in a certain way that I didn't even have that awareness. Then I, all these patterns that I was living up to, I, so there was all these things that started showing up that I didn't know. I started just learning about myself, discovering who I was. And then through that process, as I was able to process all of these unprocessed uh, aspects of myself, I was able to get closer and closer into my alignment of who I really am, my higher self, you know, the consciousness of my heart. And when I got into that alignment, then I realized I need to change my life. Nobody's going to do it for me. I have to choose me. I have to say yes to me. And that does mean... I will have to say no to other things. So then what I did is I started like making changes. I started setting boundaries. I, I, I started saying, I'm going to pick up my kids. I, I would love to be there for you, but I need to leave. So I will take care of that tomorrow. So instead of saying yes, everything all the time, let me please, let me be the thing for you. I started saying yes to me. And I started kind of relooking at my life values. What, do, what matters to me? And even though like I would always say that what matters to me is my family, you know, you would look at a person and you see what they're doing and you know what's really important to them. And what I, really what I was doing is I was making career my number one. And I realized I needed to like reinvent myself, reinvent my life and rediscover and rewrite my values. Sure. And so, so then slowly and slowly, I started changing my life to come into the alignment of my life values. So I think most people never take that time to say, well, what are my life values? Why am I here? What is really important to me? And if you don't pay attention to that, then you just end up being in alignment with societal expectations, what other people think is right for you with uh, responding, reacting to stress. But if we create those values for ourselves and we say, I'm going to be in integrity with my values. And yes, I may not have the values of the workplace. I'm going to come into my values. I'm going to honor these. And of course, I'm in a respectful way. I started setting boundaries. I started saying no to things. I started cutting things out doing less things at work and doing more things with myself, more things with my time. And I started bringing that health and balance. Mm. I think that's super interesting. I want to uh, tap a bit, uh, a bit into this, this topic. I feel that when what you just said is that you had a trajectory and at some point you realize you need to change that trajectory because family happened um, or you want to start the family, let's say. Do you think this is um, an approach that young people can take, younger generations can take in order to still feel fulfilled with their careers, but um, at some point say, okay, you know what, at, from this point onwards, I'm actually want to focus, I actually want to focus on my family. Um, were there any, um, I don't know, I, I don't want to sound too businessy, but were there any strategies or anything that you did to decide that, you know, this is the moment where I'm going to focus on my family this is the way i'm going to do it were there any steps that you that you took 
of course, you, you said you set boundaries and you started focusing more on yourself. But were there some actual specific steps that you took or books that you read that you can share with listeners? Yes. There, when, I, when I look back, I, I didn't, at that time, I didn't come up with strategies. But when I look back, so I can see what actually happened. You know, I can reflect and say, oh, I see now what happened. So what happened is, and what I, what I realized, and I would love to give this message to all people, uh, aspiring individuals who want to be, make a difference in the world, who want to do something big, I would really give them this really important advice, which is a lot of times people come, like I, even now I see like young people, like 13 saying, I'm going to do this and I'm going to be like this. And I would say, okay, fine. You, you, you decide on something that you've chosen something for yourself, wherever that came from, you, you decided it, but I would actually even go behind that. I would actually back up even more. And I would say, when people choose a career, you know, I would say, don't rush into it. Number one, I would say, don't rush into it. Um, I realized I did rush into things along the way. And when we're rushing and running, we're not taking the time to do what, what I call is a heart pause, check in with your heart. What is it that you really love what lights you up what makes you feel so alive because your gift is related to that and the purpose of this lifetime is for you to express your gift with the world so i would just really want to give that message because i see people doing the opposite and then they wonder why they're unhappy and then they're like so unhappy in their life and they go drinking and trying to escape and trying to numb but it really comes down to the source like instead of like putting band-aids that's the source now whatever happens so if somebody chooses a career and they're like, for me, I was so passionate. I was that person. I was like, if you look up ambitious, ambition, <laughs> you know, I was there. I was like determined, ambitious, passionate, like nobody was going to change my mind, right? I was going to do this career, you know? So I was there. I was set on it. I showed up like 150%. I connected. I had fun. I had a lot of fun. I learned a lot. I grew a lot. But then what I would say to people is, as you go down that trajectory, it is so critical. And I would say you never want to have one day where you don't do this. It is so critical in everything you do in life to pause, to just pause, stop, stop your, no matter, I know that people are like, I want to do this. I got it. I get it. I get it because that's actually the ego talking, but the heart needs to be listened to. And if people take that time with themselves every morning and they just connect to their higher self, connect to their hearts, then they can reflect. Then they say, huh, what's pulling me right now? What is it that, that didn't go that well for me today? I wonder why that didn't go that well. Well, I'm really pulled to this. I'm feeling that I want to be there as a mom. Like we evolve as human beings. We're not meant to, you know, commit with blood to this one thing and you're done for the rest of your life, no matter what. No, that's the mind. That's the ego, right? But the heart, you're meant to open, expand, evolve. And I would always tell people, you know, really, really pay so much attention to your heart because your heart is going to tell you what's right for you. Your priorities, your life values, what's important to you. It's going to change. It's going to change maybe today to tomorrow, maybe in five weeks. So for me, what happened is I, I, I wasn't listening. I felt it was something was not right, but I didn't care because I didn't give myself that opportunity because nobody told me about that. But then what happened for me, my body stopped me. So if you don't do it, it will, your body would eventually do it for you. If you pay attention to the signs, everything bad that happens to us is actually the best thing that happens to you because it's meant to take, it's a signal for you to pay attention to something because something you're doing right now is in the opposite direction of where you need to be. It's always like that. Everything that's bad, it's always actually for your highest good, right? So what I would say to people that as you're going through the trajectory in your life, take that pause, take that space, take that reflection. We even do now with our, with our family, we, every couple of months, we look at our life values. What are, what are we feeling as our life values right now? Hmm. Like I'm feeling that first, we always said family first, and we actually changed it recently. Now we say self first, because I can't even show up to my family if I don't show up to myself first. So the most important person to me, I always tell the kids, it's actually me because I cannot be the best mom if I'm not showing up for me first. So like people, like if you take that time, you take that space every day to come into your higher self, to process, to reflect and listen to your heart, that will tell you the answer. And then you redirect, you say, well, I know that I said I would do that, but this is what I'm feeling called to. Therefore, what are the steps that I need to do to align with my value? Okay, it means I have to say no to that, no to that. So now when people ask me, I used to say yes to all the talks. Now when they call me, hey, you want to do this talk? You want to do that? It's the number one thing. It's the best thing. You would be so amazing. I pause. I say, I used to say yes, yes. Now I say, 
let me, let me get back to you. Let me get back to you. I want to consider this, but thank mm-hmm. you so much for asking me. I really appreciate you thought about me. I pause and then I, I usually your heart, if you actually listen to your heart, your heart will tell you right away. Like if you're in your heart, you'll know, like you'll know right away. You're, Cause if you feel like a uh, contraction, it means no, it's your body, your heart saying no. And if you, 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 you know, there's a decision and you feel like an openness, a lightness, it's yes. So your heart would tell you right away if it's for you or if it's not for you. But most people never do that. And they deny themselves the alignment of uh, living a life aligned with their heart. And that's really unhappy people who are unhappy, unfulfilled, stressed, diseased. It's an out, a li- um, out of alignment with your heart. Mm. So that's I have what a, I would say. I have a question that is very well linked with that because you said something very interesting. You said that you need to put yourself first. And I totally agree with that. I think it's the number one step to start having a, a good life professionally, personally, spiritually, the way you want. Um, however, how do you manage your life when um, it's in perspective to your development? For example, you have a job where you work with people or colleagues that might not have the same values or the same, um, let's say, ideas about life that you have. And you know that you're doing the best thing for yourself, but others do not understand it. How do you manage that uh, situation with others so you don't become the outsider, you become the one that helps people too? How can you go around that? You asked the best question because this is exactly where I'm at right now. (laughs) This is exactly like you're describing my life. So because of all the changes that I made in myself, I'll be honest, and most people in my work and I, we have completely different values. And I used to have the same values. But when I really checked in with myself, I don't have the same values. I don't believe in waking up, running to the hospital, no time for self, no time for family, giving your heart and blood, and that's it. And I believe I have different life values. I believe that there's even more to life than your profession. There's more to life than your family. There's more to life than the, there's so much more to life that we don't even know about because we don't take the time to like be curious, enjoy life that like, if I'm going to die tomorrow night, will I say that, man, I really lived a purposeful life. I really lived a life. Am I going to say, oh, I did all these great things for other. No, you're going to say to yourself, did I really live life big? Did I really enjoy and show up? So I am, t- so that's where I'm at right now. And I'm aware that my values are very different, actually quite opposite to the values of everybody in my work, because everybody in my work is all about work is first, everything else is second, time for self is second. There's no time for anything. So the way that I handle it is um, it's not, first of all, it wasn't easy initially because I felt like, um, oh, I should, I should, you know, because it was a pattern of trying to fit into them. Uh, it was a pattern that I had, which is, let me please, let me, let me fit into their world. Let me, that's when I'm a team player. And if I don't, then it's like, I'm abandoning that. So I had to come up with those patterns and let them go. So I did a lot of work there. But now what I say to myself is I'm going to honor my life. This is my life. I'm going to live my life. I'm not going to live my life as a reflection of other people's uh, visions of how my life should be. This is my life. And the only person that's going to decide how my life is lived is me. I'm the creator. I'm the master of my destiny. I choose my life. It's me. Otherwise, I become a helpless victim. So I really come into this power where I say, this is my life value. This is what I believe in. And then when I show up to work and and I hear what people say and I see all these kinds of things, I respectfully, I I provide my own input. And And I even say, you know, have you taken a vacation? Because you look like you're so stressed out. You need a vacation. You need to go unplug. And I bring in my values. Or I say to somebody, oh, I'm so stressed. Oh, I ate these burgers and I'm drinking. And I said, I say, I laugh along. And then I say, um, you know, but seriously, I'm like, we are health providers. We need to be in integrity with who we are. Why don't you, you know, look at my green shake. This is so good for you. Do you know what this has in it? It has all these amazing things and I get all excited and they're like, wow, I think I want to try it. You know, so what I do is I, 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 I'm showing up with, in like excitement and enthusiasm, honoring my values and my way of being. And, and people, they almost, they like, oh, she's so excited and enthusiastic. It's kind of hard to like, like what, how, what are they going to do? Now they may not always agree with everything. Right. And they may feel like some people like literally like, like I took a vacation the last, uh, I took a week off and people in my work, when they take a vacation, they still call into the meetings. They still, you know, uh, they never miss a meeting, all these virtual meetings, they call in, it's like they check their emails. And last week I said, 
I'm not going to be available. I went to every person. I said, I'm not going to be available. And I, and then when, when it's there and I said, the people that are the most busiest, the ones who never take a break, I would say to them like funny, I'm like, you know, you should go on a vacation and don't check your email. Don't check your phone. It's fine. Go enjoy yourself. That's what life is about. So I just start putting these seeds, you know, I don't know, I'm not going to change a whole culture and I'm not going to try to control that. I'm just going to focus on me and I'm going to be excited and enthusiastic about me and honor me. And I'm aware that they might not, uh, you know, like they have meetings every day at 6.30 and 7 and, and, and I'm not going to go to every meeting. I'm going to the meetings. I might take my kids to my work and I will say, I'm taking my kids to work. And I'm also accepting that they might not be okay with that. And even though it doesn't feel good that they are not accepting of that, it feels better that I'm true to myself. You know, that feeling of being in alignment with myself is better. It, it feels better than me feeling a bit bad because I'm not there for what they wanted me to be. You know, mm -hmm. so it, that's, that's how I approach it. I think that's very brave. And I also think that most people will find that very uncomfortable, to be honest. Uh, trying to um, be the one that is very true to him or herself and being kind of the outsider or just the, the person that stands out because it's so different than the rest. And mm -hmm. I, on that tone, I would like to hear your advice for people listening that might feel this little itch in their stomach when they think about, you know, just maybe the life they live or some of the decisions they've made because it was the right thing, but maybe not the right thing for them. What can we do now or what should we think about when we make decisions in order to, you know, live a fulfilling life or what, what do you, what do you think about that? Um, I would say the number one thing I would say, whatever people do in life, whatever um, decisions, whatever way they want to go. I really, 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 my, you know, my daughter comes to me recently and, and, and she was like, I'm going to be an actress and I'm going to do, and like, they're trying to, cause other friends are doing that. They're trying to list careers and they're like nine and 11. And I listen and I say, that's so wonderful. I said, but Hey, remember, don't define your career right now. Your only job right now, the only thing you need to worry about is just find out what you love. Just what do you love? So what I would say to people is like the overall approach just in life, I would say, don't rush into anything, you know, don't like, it's like, it seems like there's so much pressure. I have to know what I mean to do. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do that. It's like, I would just say, no, just don't rush. Take, take a break. And I would say before you go into like choosing the career and things like that, I would say, live your life, get to know yourself, get to know life and try different things. Be curious, be open, go travel, go read, learn about Eastern philosophies, learn about what it means to be present in the present moment, you know, like Eckhart Tolle, uh, you know, Michael Singer, uh, you know, Wayne Dyer, you know, Tao, Tao Te Ching, you know, um, the, you know, like these are the wisdom teachers because if, if really the whole point of life before you go down a path is to get to know yourself, take time to be in the moment, not to do everything. So, the second advice I would say is um, really listen to your heart pay attention. The mind wants to attach to this, but the heart is about, huh, what am I really pulled towards? What gets me excited? Oh, that makes me, that, that idea washes warmth all over me. Like pay attention to what you feel pulled towards. And if we're attached to this and it has to be that way, we're not paying attention to the 359 degrees that's pulling you. That's there to pull you, right? So I would say the number two is really, really pay attention to what pulls you. What do you love? You know, let that be the guiding source of your career and what you do, because that's living in alignment of your heart. And if you live in alignment with your heart, that's what creates the wholeness, the beauty, the joy, the life. Um, and the third thing I would say is that if somebody is doing something and it feels hard, it feels like it's a sacrifice. It feels like it's a hardship. It's work. It's effort. It's like, I'm trying so hard. I'm putting so much effort. Consider, is that really for you? Because if something is really for you, it's really going to pull you. It's going to be a sense of ease. It's going to be like a flow. So it, anything that you have to try and it's like, oh my God. It, maybe it's not for you because when you're in alignment with your heart, there's an ease and there's a flow. Um, and the last thing I would say is um, whatever happens in life, whatever bad things happen, like in my life, I realize when I look back, 
the, the, the hardest moments, the most difficult moments were actually my greatest teachers. So pay attention to them. Don't just, oh, okay, let me go back. Let me just pretend that didn't happen. The bad boyfriend, the bad fall, the, that pain. No, like those are telling you, they're signs. They're signs that they're telling you that get ready, get ready to learn something right now. Like, so when something bad happened, like something's going on and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm getting ready to really, because what happens in those moments, life is asking us to grow. Life is asking us, there's something you are needing to grow in right now. Pay attention. Don't put it away. Don't get triggered. So focus on, and that to me, that's how I define resilience. Resilience is not just bouncing back from adversity, but to me, resilience is growing from that downfall. That downfall happened. There's a growth opportunity. Like for me, like the, the back ache and all the things that I had was the greatest blessing because it said to me, enough woman can't you see like you're supposed to stop and be and stop doing so much and so my body forced me to stop and then i thought it was the worst thing that happened to me but now it was the best thing that happened to me because i stopped i listened i went inside and then i changed my life i took that different detour in alignment with my heart and now where i'm at i'm so happy i'm so happy with my life right now you know i'm in alignment with my heart and so anyway these are the things that i would recommend wow yes. How beautiful to be um, in this state where you feel so happy and, and positive and you really want to share that because you're in such a, such a good place. Thank you so much for doing this. I love the fact that you are so inspiring and this entire pro passion project that I, I do right now, to be honest, with every interview, I feel so inspired. Um, There's so many wonderful people around. So thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate uh, you giving us the time and I'm sure that listeners enjoyed uh, this conversation. Thank you.